Mohamed Dabo, a 45-year-old miner, is walking to the diamond fields of Koidu in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Sierra Leone is one of the 10 largest diamond producing countries in the world. Yet it is one of the world's poorest nations. Mohammed earns less than a dollar a day and a small percentage of what he finds. Most days or weeks or even months, there is nothing. Right now, that feeling the family, let God give me big one. Why well, go able responsible for my family. So that all now they pray God for today. One day God go must give me. He go must provide. Manoj Bawaji has joined the great migration from the country to the city in the hope of a better life. He's 13 years old. For the next three months, Manoj will apprentice to become a diamond cutter. India has become the biggest diamond cutting center in the world. 95% of the world's rough diamonds are now cut and polished in India each year. The cutters of India have revolutionized what we think of as a show. Diamonds that were once sold into the industrial market because they were too small are now polished into gems. Millions of low-cost diamonds every year. These diamonds that Manoj must learn to master. is a match. He introduces buyers to large, expensive rocks. Jacob is a diamond broker. Jacob has spent most of his working life within two city blocks, 46th and 47th Streets, the heart of the diamond district in New York City. Zutnik is known in the neighborhood as the mayor of 47th Street. New York is where the big diamonds, the unusual or rare diamonds, mostly wind up, and many of them pass through the hands of Jacob Zutnik. I go to auctions, it's called in Yiddish schmoozing. It's going to see and to be seen. It's like a meeting place. We get together, we, we talk, and you browse around the goods.
Twice a year, Christie's holds the magnificent jewels auction. It's exclusive. It's high end. If you have something exceptional for sale, you take it to Christie's. There's no two diamonds in the world alike. There isn't such a thing. It's a question of feeling. Nobody, if you take one stone, you show it to 10 people, and you can ask prices. Nobody's gonna give you the exact same number. What's the whole thing? Why is diamond so expensive? It's just a rock on the ground. Because of its rarity. The more rare the stone, the more expensive the stone. Everybody wants something which nobody has, especially in diamonds. $680,000, thank you. $700,000, $720,000, $750,000, For thousands of years, men have felt compelled to pursue diamonds for profit and power, for the sublime beauty of diamonds. There is something about them that we covet that has made them into a symbol of our worth, the measure of a love. And in a passing world, a hint of the eternal. Hi, everybody! Guess what? That must have set you back a bit. Not really, back two months' salary. Not much for something that's forever. This is a lot. See ya. Some corn are planted. You see ya. You see? You see? Uh, you can't see self, you see? I the 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 See ya? See them born here all. This is uh, spring mantra, spring. This is the first house where they're born here in this town. The first house. Since first attack, they born it. In 1991, Mohammed and his people were plunged into a brutal 11-year civil war. It began as an uprising against a corrupt government, but quickly became a war about who would control the country's most important resource, diamonds. Arms and mercenaries for the warring sides were paid for in diamonds. The rebels had their mines, the government had its. The world came to know them as blood diamonds. Millions of innocent victims were caught in the crossfire. Tens of thousands were murdered or had their limbs hacked off. The first attack on Naya, 
na corner ya we dey our lady ya na net e ri boom 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 then run more come between her they say hey them people they don't come then they kill they say they know they left nothing anybody they meet and they kill you Then go all the way and cool. Now, what a side they then counter, yeah. Now, then put inside land over, then kill her. Now, road, yeah, then kill her. As soon as they take her, we say, well, a lot of fine place for her, for a lot of better. The land over go turn, be the pankan. It can't walk, scatter. Now, then say, well, now, we're not doing nothing. But this man for a better, the whole town. We go kill on all, we go burn the whole house. So who's here from? To my family all, Papa, oh, Mama, oh, Piki, oh, my wife, oh, all. Go to Nyakwa, then they be here now. Motoka, when you hear it, in addition to the motoka, say, if you don't hear it, and now, Pipi, now there. We all go inside bus. God, then they pull you now, they have no more. God. The war is over, but the diamonds which sustained it are still here to underwrite another war or they could be the country's greatest hope. Once a year, the Diamond World gathers in Las Vegas for one of the largest jewelry trade events in the world. But while it likes to show off its wares, the diamond business has from the beginning been cloaked in secrecy. At least it was until Martin Rappaport came along. Preview. Vegas is not like Africa, I'll tell you that much. It's a former diamond broker himself, Rappaport was the first to publish a price list for diamonds coming to market. Buyers could, for the first time, see what a fair price was. For a brief time, the bottom dropped out of the business. Many had profited from secrecy. Rappaport had his life threatened, and for two years, he had to wear a bulletproof vest. His latest mission is to ensure that the diamond miners of Sierra Leone, like Mohammed, receive fair wages. The damning question facing the diamond industry is, if a billion or two dollars worth of diamonds came out of Sierra Leone, why are there no wells? Why is there no water? Why are there no schools? You took out the assets, you put nothing back in. How's it going, guys? Let's go, we have to begin. If we don't take care of these one million diggers in Africa, then we are lowlifes. Rappaport is here to convince the who's who of the diamond world why they should join in his mission. Hear ye, hear ye. Welcome, everybody. Ethics is about doing the right thing. Are we only interested in selling more diamonds, folks, here in this room? Or is it the problem of a million people in Africa? Angola, Congo, Sierra Leone countries that are really messed up. And diamonds have played a very important role in the messing up of these countries. Today, people in Sierra Leone are the poorest people in the world, and we're using their diamonds, and they are suffering. World's poorest people. United Nations says so, OK? Is our diamond dream their diamond nightmare? Is our symbol of love their symbol of exploitation? Is that what's really going on here? Do we give a damn? I'm asking that question right here and right now. 
What about the people? We're a people business, right? Now, I have an idea. That's one idea. There may be other ideas that are better ideas. Get ready for this. Fair trade jewelry as a product category. Think about it. You give a woman a ring, and you say to her, this ring has made the lives of people better. And you want to tell me that you guys can't sell that? You can sell the hell out of it. We don't sell utility. We don't sell sneakers that let you bounce around. We sell the idea behind the product. And this idea is beautiful. Sierra Leone is the most difficult place in the world. God put those diamonds in Sierra Leone for a purpose. And maybe the purpose was to challenge us. When I was there in the war, and I went to the amputee camp, and I saw this, this baby, Maria, and a guy was next to her, and he's saying, see what, what they did to us, see what they did. Tell them, tell them what they did to us. And I just felt like, you know, no one knew, no one cared, no one. It was unbelievable. And I said, you know, if I can do something that makes the difference, then I should do it. Before he can cut his first complete diamond, Manoj must learn the elegant symmetry that transforms a rough stone into a brilliant gem. मार्गदर्शन देते हैं वो डांटते भी हैं। सीखने में तो वो डांटते हैं वो डांटे के तो ही मेरे को आते हैं आएगा ना? अब हम मस्त हैं। ये तो जल्द कुबली। ओह लाइट रमान ने कुबली पड़ा मुझे मार दिया। इधर तेरे ओह बोलो मैं नहीं बोला मार दूँ। The diamonds Manoj is learning to cut are some of the smallest in the world. Some no larger than a grain of sand. Yet each round brilliant is cut with the same 58 facets that generations of diamond cutters determined would best create a tiny world of endlessly refracting light. A convergence of physics and what seemed like magic. where the first recorded diamond was found 2,500 years ago. But until recently, they were the exclusive property of India's royalty. Goshishi. Now there's a whole Ganyabi. new mass market for diamonds Hade. in India. And when it comes Raste. to the manufacture of design, Dan. there are no borders. Hosla. Ek lamha ye zindagi. Darashu tuhira. Celebrate yourself. Kia Diamond Jewelry. You are the occasion. The diamond business in India is run by a handful of close-knit family dynasties. It is one of the reasons for India's success. Akshay Mehta and his family own Blue Star Group one of India's largest diamond manufacturers. We eat diamonds, we dream diamonds, we sleep diamonds, so, you know, it's, it's there in the blood, you know. Whatever luxuries I get, it's from this. Whatever pleasure I get, it's from this. Uh, 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 I don't know, I mean, uh, uh, everything I get, or everything what I am today, it's because of this. 
Today I am 53 years, huh? some 18,890 days of my life have passed. I want to be on this chair till the age of 70. So I have remaining 6,570 days. A single day missing or a single day going non-lucrative, going in different thoughts, it does not help. And I, I correct myself. Akshay and his brothers took over the family business from their father. Akshay's eldest son, Arja, has been groomed all his life to take over from him. The family is the biggest asset I have. And the key element of this is, uh, is sacrificing. It has to be the business, the family, that should come first ahead of any one individual or any one ego. This is always what I expect from my sons, that they will take the grandfather's name to the best and the highest level what exists. It's a very strong intense. It has maybe a little data which can be fixed up and can improve the color much more. Because the way it's cut, Jacob's clients rely on him to let them know what's up for sale. At this year's Christie's auction, the centerpiece is the Joan Croc collection. Mrs. Croc had the good sense to marry Ray, the man who built the McDonald's hamburger empire. Jacob is here to check out what kind of ice a whole lot of burgers can buy. He's also gathering intelligence for a dealer an ocean away. Andy, what did you say about the three characters? Uh, hold on one second. Let me just see what you got cooking anyway. Andy Cohen is a diamond dealer. He learned his trade in his grandfather's diamond shop. I am just going over a couple numbers. We're waiting for Jacob's call because he's interested in a couple lots. So the action is starting, and we're a little bit unprepared. We're going to go 880. The piece is probably going to bring $1 million. $1 million. Look what's happening to our market. That's crazy. So a lot of private interest in a diamond necklace? It's a high-risk game. When you put money into stones like that, it's better to buy a house, because what's the real value of a diamond? You're putting up a lot of money, and you could make a big mistake. I mean, I remember we bought a piece of rough, and we put it on the wheel, and it shattered like a... Like, if, if you take a window and you put a hammer in the window, it all shattered those stones, worthless. You, have three pear shapes. you can really get hurt. That's Jacob. Hello? Angela, what's Mark? What's Mark Yankala? I just want to ask you, what lots are you interested in? I grabbed two of these stones. The pink, I don't like the plain pink. The blue is, is going to go for expensive also, about three or two. It's too much money. Take a look at the yellow. Pear shape, I looked at it. Did you like the yellow pear shape? No, no, it's too big for me. Too big for you. OK. What else? About 334. Oh, I love that stone, your uncle. This is one of those special stones. You know, the material's nice. It's snappy. It's like that Golconda material. If we recut that, take the chip out, you might improve the color. Mm -hmm. So how much do you want to go on this stone, like 15 plus? Exactly, 15 plus. So I'll go with you on this one. OK, this is a stone to buy. That's a good stone. That's a good stone, Yonko. All right. OK, later. American designers take to the runways of New York in the orgy of stars and frocks of fashion. Tonight is extra special. For the first time, Fashion Week is showcasing a jeweler as part of the show. He's Chris Ayer, known in the trade 
as the Iceman. I'm trying to bring a different way of thinking to the industry. A lot of people in the industry understand now that they can make a lot of money in the black community. With all the new, you know, money that a lot of the people are making now, they understand it as a market there. Athletes and actors and people of that nature, we're definitely making a mark. And there is nothing you can do about that. The people have spoken. I called you back too. Until 16 years ago, Chris was flipping burgers and sleeping in the back seat of his car. Now he sells his jewelry designs to a growing clientele made up of the super rich, mostly black, rappers, athletes, and Hollywood stars. Most of it was because it was a market that was really neglected. Nobody paid attention to it. And when I walked up to all the jewelers that were telling me about it, yeah, those people don't spend money. They don't have any money. But I guess most people realized they were wrong. <laughs> Chris was born in the tiny country of Benin in Africa. It could not be further from where he is now. He left to chase the American dream. He found it in an unlikely place. Being a person of color in the industry, I'll tell you, wasn't easy. This is a business about money, greed, class, whatever. But none of it goes to my head. Chris has come to meet with Martin Rappaport. You know, this is done, but this is, Martin this is hopes to convince Chris to help him spread the gospel of fair trade for Sierra Leone's diamonds to the red carpet crowd. Chris, hey, how are you? How you doing? <laughs> Welcome, man. Diamonds in Hollywood, nice after all, really have always beautiful. been a glorious match. Beautiful stuff. Thank you very much. You sell beautiful stuff to beautiful people. Hey, thank you. <laughs> now we have to make beautiful diamonds. OK. The diamond isn't about the cut, the color, the clarity. The story here is that we are really changing the lives of people in Africa. It's not about us. It's not about our business. Mm -hmm. You might say, oh, I'm interested in making fair trade jewelry. OK, that might be fine. But I'm telling you, if you want to hang out with me, that's secondary bullshit. It's a spillover effect of something else that you're trying to do, OK? I grew up in Africa, I'm telling you. I see a lot of uh, challenges in trying to make this work. How do you uh, tackle the problem of corruption? People who, are, who, who don't have anything, it's, it's a lot easier to corrupt them than people who are pretty much, you know, content or... I wouldn't call it corruption as much, it's just the way things are done in Africa. They have no way out. If we give the guy some money at the grassroots, digger level, he can get out of the ghetto. We can get out of this slavery crap. If I'm going to jump on board, I want to yeah. make sure that I really understand, you know, uh, where you're coming from. I believe we can do miracles. Let me tell you, Chris, I want to tell you something. I don't know what's going to happen there, but I'll tell you this. If you can't imagine yourself doing it, then don't bother. Look, 200 years from now, 100 years from now, I'm priceless, money, did you do what you could do to make the world a better place? You, Chris here, did you do that? That's what you're going to answer. You're going to be an old guy. You'll be sitting around telling your grandchildren, right? OK? What are you going to be most proud of? You made another piece of jewelry for another movie star, you had another fashion show. You made another CD-ROM. What I do say to you is that we are going to, almost for free, bushwhack through the jungle, create a path where there is no path scar our hands, sweat like bullets, create something, and then everyone else will walk on that path. And the only person that will really know in the end is going to be you, your God, and your grandchildren. That's what it's about, Chris. Most of Sierra Leone's diamonds are mined by hand, so anyone with a shovel, a bucket, and a sieve can become a digger. If Mohammed finds a diamond, he'll have to hand it over to the landowner. He'll decide what it's worth and how much Mohammed will get to keep. 
This is my land. I am the owner. If there was a big diamond found today, this is mine. This is mine. Yeah. God said, I am the owner. <laughs> I'm going to the the rich and sound. Sunday, some party day from uh, Monday to Grabu. When you clear the Grabu, you pack up. Pack up one place. When you pack up, you find sicker. Sicker for us. So now I'm going to defend her. So the sicker back court, it's the left diamond. But I think it's simple. Why the kids in a big one at the sea and center, we sell the material together at the sea and there. There are virtually no jobs in Sierra Leone, so most young men have no choice but to dig for diamonds. They are at the losing end of a system that makes millions for the few at the top and the barest subsistence for them. The value of the diamond, no, no, finally. Because the big one, then when they tell we say, who are the dickers, so we not sabia. And I be a belief in that Yes. But they know, the value one, no, of and say, this is, they give me money. Only two, eh? Yes. This lady, man, is saying that slavery, huh? But no way. Who said it? If I look at the destruction, the toll the diamonds are taking on the lives of young people growing up, I wish they never existed. Thousands of miners immersed in water for six, eight hours. That is a way of life to them. They are not educated, mass unemployment, other alternatives are not readily available. People used to refer to diamonds as the devil's egg in this part of the world. They called it the devil's egg. Most of them don't even know the value or the worth or what diamonds are actually for. That is the primary reason why they are always poor, because of ignorance of the commodity they are, in fact, spending almost all of their life looking out for. after years of drought there is barely enough cotton to sustain the family. There will be no going back for Manoj, 
and the family will look to the future through him. Nei, ce ucro mi-e gumă vidită, e un mână nu-ți lac tu. Domne, harul la ghepon. Domne, e-mi tăi că e ucro agăl nicolci. Tomorrow is a big day for Manoj. After three months of unpaid apprenticeship, he will cut his first complete diamond. If he does well, he'll take his place with the other cutters. He'll be able to send some money home. આપણે The majors have spared no expense. The wedding stage will have all the opulence of a Bollywood movie set. She will bear the next eldest son to be groomed for the family business. So heavy, gorgeous. It's so heavy. No, it's not so heavy. It's perfect. And I cannot bear this weight. And I cannot bear this weight. Mama, I cannot bear it. You have patience with them. They're doing it perfect. One thing is enough. Mama, it requires water or drink. I need water. Mama, I am getting chakkar. Martin Rappaport has finally arrived in Sierra Leone. He's brought along his sons and a few fair trade advocates. They'll spend the next week crisscrossing the country to see if Martin's dream of better wages for the diamond miners will withstand the reality on the ground. We're going to change the way that diamonds are mined in Africa. And we're going to change the way consumers buy diamonds in Fifth Avenue, New York. And it's that kind of single-minded focus, determination, and unwillingness to be sidetracked by all kinds of other issues that I think is going to help make this mission a success. Chris Eyre is here too. He wants to see if Martin will be as persuasive in Sierra Leone as he was with him. I felt like it was time for me to come out and find out, you know, what I could do specifically in the diamond sector since that's my business to create more opportunities for people who otherwise wouldn't have had it. And I see all the little kids hanging out, and that used to be me. <laughs> Hanging out. 
Yeah. Of course I do. I get paid I get paid to plug to plug Mr. Rapper Boy. Yeah, we, we are the real rappers here. <laughs> this is the real rap, man. So I just rap, rap guys, rap go, club, go ahead, rap. I'm, hey, the I, second rapper, I can't pull, rap, man. Pull, 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 pull. I can help with this bump and bump and bump. Mohamed Dabo. Demokoroma. Fabian Landbrook, like I'd work in the office. And they gave me salary for the year. Once God don't mark her, you can have the fit and the In them. I got three girls, four boys. I will say they may not land book, but I let me pick in that land. But mine, I not allow them because me not land book. There, I don't get small idea, I don't know what's in a book. Look, I manage no more. In get this idea, so say it can it can follow at any time. I mean pick in them day. I don't know. Now outside they make naba, now my family problem, they solve naba, or now me picking the school business, or now the job business. And it is my heart, you know the rest. And now the power been there ahead, but now I'm there ahead. It's sick, it's sick. It's showtime. Martin is about to pitch to the people who represent the interests in Sierra Leone's diamonds. Government ministers, international aid agencies, and the country's security forces. Members of parliament, friends, uh, it's great to be here. I came here with an idea, a dream. And I came here with a challenge to the government of Sierra Leone, to the NGOs, how do we turn a negative situation into a positive one? You give a girl a two-carat diamond. She flashes it to her friend. Her friend doesn't have a two-carat diamond. So what does her friend say? Oh, is that one of those blood diamonds? How can I sell a product that makes people feel bad? I'm not in that business. I don't want to just make Sierra Leone diamonds as good as South African diamonds or Russian diamonds or De Beers diamonds. I want to compete with them. I want to kill them. Because that's how life is. You know, if you're just hanging out, you're an accident waiting to happen. But if you're an aggressive bastard, you do business. Anyways, what did you think of this? Thing? No, I thought I mean, the presentation was amazing. You're, you're very eloquent. You have a way of uh, reaching people. The only thing I thought is there are some points where you know, you you convince people and then you don't convince them. Uh-oh, that's not good. Uh, um, what do you think we should change? Well, it's not necessarily about changing anything. What I, what I sincerely believe is I think that you need people to do whatever it is that you need to do, but sometimes it doesn't really, you know what I mean? They you don't have to mean, go that level of detail, maybe. Yeah, I think sometimes less could be more, but, you know. What you're saying to me is, what Mordecai says to me is, you talk too much. <laughs> but, you're being very, yeah. but you're being very diplomatic about it. And it's true. If I would only shut up more, I would get more done. I'm not afraid to do anything. I'm just, you know, just like any good businessman or just like any intelligent human being. You know, just because some, a friend is inviting you to dive into something, you don't just jump into it. You know, I don't like the idea of hand out. I don't like the idea of just pay a guy a little bit more money because the digger gets more money now, so what? To me, that's that's still the whole, you know, beggar and master type of mentality. If you really want to uplift people, you inspire people, and you inspire people by making them believe things about themselves that you can see even when they can't see it. People don't want to beg. They don't want to depend on other people. There's a certain pride in uh, making your own way. 
Yeah, pay them fair wages, give them fair wages, that's wonderful, it's a great idea. But is that is that all is that all? Is that all there is to do? You know? One ninety-three. It's nine p.m. Andy's day is just starting. In New York, it's three in the afternoon. The Christie's auction is about to begin. So here we are, sitting calmly, chilling out, drinking beers, talking on the telephone, you know. But in the room, people are sweating. They're hyped up. Everybody in ties and jackets, swishing around. Dealers making little huddles, coming together, making groups, trying to figure out who's going to put up money to, to buy this or that. Telephone banks from every country all over the world. And then you have the privates. And it becomes drama. It becomes a little, each lot becomes like a little mini drama. And the auctioneer is the director, and it's, you know, it's quite something to behold. 80,000 with Leila, 85,000 against you, 90,000, 95,000 against the two of you, 100,000. Everybody wants a stone coming up. Everybody. What are you up to, Les? 520 against you. 530 against you. Go ahead. Bidding. 540,000. 550,000. Go ahead. 560,000 dollars. 560 with you. 570,000. Go 580, yeah. 580,000. 580 with you. Is everybody else out except us and one other person, Liz? It's us and one other. At 500. And 80,000, 590,000 now to a new place. Take 600. 600? $600,000 on my right. Leslie's bid now. 600 with you. 610 against you. 620. 620? 620,000. 630,000. 630 against you. Oof. Six. Thanks. Go ahead, 640. 640,000. 650000 dollars 650 against you. Jeez. 660. I think that's enough money. You're done? Are you I'm out? done. I'm out. At six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, it's your bid, Natasha. We gave it a good try, huh? Yeah, we did. You gotta get off the gotta get off the bus at some point. It's a silly game, but that's the game we're playing. So. Rocks. We're we're hunting for rocks, you know. We have nothing better to do with our lives. <laughs> one hundred and twenty. Sold to you, sir. Thank you very much. Battle one hundred and seventy-eight. You can't get disappointed. The good thing about this is if you don't put a bet down, you don't lose. So, <laughs> I haven't lost yet. Diamonds are a connection to my grandfather. My grandfather lost his son. He died at a young age. So with me, he was able to reconnect and sort of pass on some knowledge. So it was more than just making money or business. It was about a grandfather who I loved. He taught me how to cut them. He taught me how to sell them. He taught me about integrity. And the more you deal in it and the knowledge gets passed down from generation to generation, the more you master it and becomes in your genes. Andy, like countless other Jews, has a special bond with diamonds. For centuries, the diamond trade was one of the few the Jews of Europe were allowed to practice. At every point in their long history of exile, diamonds came with them. You could convert a house, the land it stood on, the possessions of a lifetime into diamonds, and carry them in your pocket to your next stop, and begin life anew. Identify your bags and make sure everything is there now. I want a solid bag count of what we're taking and what we're not taking. 
Yeah, I wish you were this. You know, all dressed up like this. No, because I got to go and meet with somebody. Yeah, yeah. you see, he's doing his thing, this guy. I got to do my thing. I'm, a, he's doing I'm, his thing. I'm an independent yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I like independence. I'm also independent. <laughs> All right. I just, I, I just, it's good. Go chase the deals. Yeah, it's good. I think, I think you'll hunt to something. It's like a work, but it has kinks in it. So help me get rid of the kinks. I will. I'll let you finish your thing. And okay. then when you're absolutely set on what you want to do, I want to sit down and talk with you again, even if we talk over the phone. Okay. This guy's got lots of money. Now I know. He's got lots of pockets. <laughs> Martin is moving pockets, on. Man. Without Chris. I don't have any pockets, man. I don't have any pockets, Chris man. Chris has decided the forces working nah, against nah, Martin's nah, money's dream not worth are just too powerful. Okay. Everybody, please make sure your stuff is with you in your car. Okay, because when we download, usual, everybody Martin should be responsible. Rises Things can easily get misplaced or lost, like my briefcase. Okay, so Morty, do we have copies of passports? His son Morty has learned to take his father's irrepressible style in stride. What it's like? It's definitely not a vacation. That's for sure. It's hectic, counting the bags, yelling. So, can you pay attention to me, please? Please. Yeah, this is typical of him, whether it's business, family, or vacation, or work. It's the same crap. It's a personality thing. All right, let's go. Over it so it's all good. You gotta deal with it. You don't go on a lot of vacations with the family. <laughs> and that's it. Enjoy life. Everybody take one bottle of water per person, please. If I could do all of this from um, Miami Beach, you know, I'd probably be a little happier. We <laughs> have to let these things fully go. That's what? bad. Two of them can stay here and wait. I don't have to wait for these guys. Oh, what's going on is that we have broken down at 11 o'clock of the night, three hours out of Bacono. One of our cars is broken down. I'm gonna move some passengers around, and we're gonna get out of here with the three remaining cars, and we are not gonna spend all night waiting for these guys to cock around with the cars. And if they don't like it, I'm sorry, we're on the road. We're not sitting in the middle of Africa and not getting to where we need to go. 7.30 tomorrow morning, everybody's up for breakfast, and we need to make our meetings. Yeah. So we're gonna have some you get your stuff out of the car. A lot of people talk about my interpersonal skills, and the fact is that I am not here take care of people, other than the diggers. Whose is this? Let's go. It's yours? Take it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. If I wanted to be a charming ambassador and make sure that people were very happy, um, I could do that. But I am not here to be charming. Step out of that car and get in the suburban. Of course I leave the people there. We've got great responsibility here. We're going to spend all night having six drivers stand around a car? No, I want to move. Okay? Right you give me right two down. people here, and that's it, okay? We've emptied this car, and we're moving our ass. Truth is, my communication skills are excellent. They're in your face, and that's how I am. Come on, go and help them, and let's make it happen. All right, get on. For all their seeming permanence, diamonds owe their lives to hands and eyes. Manoj's hand may slip. He may blink at the wrong moment. 
diamonds have their brilliant existence, just this side of being ground to dust. But remember the other day, my husband, early morning, it was about five o'clock, he was crying when he left for his walk. Maybe it's more deeper feeling for me. I cannot sleep. I just, these thoughts come in my mind. He'll be starting his new home. His family will be growing up there. So ultimately, he's leaving me and he's going away from me. It's not been a good night for Andy. Three hours into the auction, and he has nothing to show for it. 50, 60, 70. You want it? Yes. Finally, lot okay, 334 right. comes up. The bid is here by me at 370. Andy's anxious to redeem uh, himself. $200,000, $220,000, $240,000 now. 
at two hundred and forty thousand dollars. But he's swimming upstream against a tide of money. He's got a thousand. He's got a twenty thousand. Agents are on the phone with dot com millionaires and Arab oil barons. He's got a fifty thousand. Back up the room now. At three hundred and seventy thousand. At three hundred and seventy thousand dollars. The bill is here. Buy me at three seventy. Three hundred and eighty thousand. At three eighty. Three eighty-five. Last chance now. I'll take three ninety now. Three, uh, three, go ahead, take three. Ninety okay. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred ninety thousand. Ah, three hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Your bid, Leslie, against you, Julia. Three ninety. Any more then? Ah, uh, three hundred and ninety thousand dollars then. Three ninety. It's gonna be four hundred thousand. Ah, oh, shit! I thought you were gonna get. Against you, four hundred. Wait, hold on. Tell me, hold on one second. Four hundred. I'll take four ten if you want. Take four it is here with Julie at four hundred thousand dollars. Any more then? At four hundred. Four Go ahead. four. Four hundred ten thousand. Yeah. At four ten. It's against you, Julie now at four hundred and ten thousand dollars. Hold on then. At four hundred ten. Sold to you, Leslie then. At four hundred ten thousand. We got it. All right. So we bought one stone. <laughs> That's not bad. Yanko. So listen, um, I bought a stone, and you're more than welcome to be in with me, because we had discussed it earlier. Um, I went very high. How much you paid for it? I paid, the hammer was 410, I believe. You didn't pay that much? I had it go 390. I thought I was going to get it. Then somebody said 400, and I couldn't let it go, because I felt there was an, and it was just a beautiful stone, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have it brought to Geneva. I'm going to study it. Then I'm going to send it back to New York anyway to recut it. And then when it goes back, you take a look. If you like it, you're in. Cool? Yeah. The stone that I bought was an F. It was an emerald cut, beautiful stone, old stone, old material, cut by a master hand with master material, probably cut, I don't know, in the 30s or 40s. And I believe I can get a better cut. I can get a better quality grade, and I can get a better color. If not, I have a beautiful stone that's well paid for, and I'll sell it soon, I hope. Not for, maybe for, you know, not much money. So that's, that's what it is. Top price, and um, if I can make a buck out of this, it's the hard way. There's an expression in Yiddish, tuches on tish. Put your ass on the table, you know, talk is cheap. I put my ass on the table and I'll see. Mohammed has just lost his father and now has to support his large extended family alone. Fila, but no way to do. I pray God, let God provide for me and me some more one day. Oh, go make we live fine after the pa. So we say that I pray God at the pa. Yes. Because if they direct me, they give me idea how they live with the family. Now the pa, let me the check here. I mean now. And no gets. Driving through the night, Martin finally meets with Mohammed and the diamond diggers of Koidu. 
if the exploitation continues and you have diggers who work, they work with their bodies, they reduce their health, they reduce their lifespan. Diggers die in their 40s, early 40s. Hey, what's happening, man? Working hard? Yes, sir. You finding diamonds? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? Is it good? Are you like us. the job? You like the job? Is Diamond it good? is not for all. Diamond is not for you. This mineral you find, it is very important, maybe in your own country or first of all, it is very important. But we don't know. We just find this mineral every day digging. The problem, money. And job, good job. Like factory, if you have, if you have a factory in, in, in Sierra Leone, we can live. We are hard workers. But we don't have factory. I'm tired, but I can't rest. Shake, shake there. Shake, shake. Shake, Cohen's diamond has arrived at the next stop of its journey with Linda Salkin. Let's see what they have here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love them. They love me too. They've been very good to me. They're magical. They sing. They dance. They have energy. They're spiritual. <laughs> They're brilliant. And they have potential to be even more brilliant when they come to me. So I get to make them even better than they are. Linda's a gemologist. Before a diamond is sent to the cutting wheel, Linda maps it out, reads its interior world like a cartographer charting a course. Hello. Hey, Andy, how are you today? It's Linda. How's it going, buddy? Andy has sent lot 334 to Linda to see what she can do no, to no, improve it for okay, sale. Pass, it's not a problem. I'm much more concerned with um, getting the corners even and getting all the little bruises out. No, no, definitely. I don't mind straightening that. Diamond, the points are much bigger than on the other. Right. Yeah, I don't mind straightening that out. That one's a good story. I hope you don't mind me doing this, too, because I got a good feeling about this stone. It's special in that old world way, you know, the, just the way it's. Because the charm, the jewelry, the big shoulders. Right, we want to keep the flavor of it. I know. Absolutely. Is it charming to you? It's very charming. I mean, to me, that is a sexy, gorgeous stone. Yeah, this one smacked me because it's a beauty, you know? A little crooked, um, but it spoke to you. It was a stone with individual personality. And you put your dreams into it and your hope, you know? And um, try and turn a stone into something more beautiful. When I'm working on a large stone, it becomes part of who I am. I sleep it, I eat it, I breathe it. It is in my brain and in my system. That's when you become part of the stone. No. Jacob is here to see if any of his clients will be interested in buying Andy's diamond. Hi, Linda. I see gray ligand here or just uh, like there's a little bit. Ice. No, there's, there is, it's in the short side over uh, here. This one has a tint. You know, chips do impart a little bit of color, but it has a the tint. The body color on the narrow side. It has a tint. It's gorgeous, though. It's a one of a kind. The, the face is gorgeous. The more I look at the stone, the more I love it. It's a serious diamond. 
Hey Dan, how are ya? Listen, I just came back, I saw something drop that gorgeous, I know you're gonna love it. While Jacob works his way through his client list, the cutter, Mr. O, as he's known in the trade, is starting to work on Andy's diamond. The diamond cutters of New York are renowned for their work. These master cutters, mostly Jewish, are descended from generations of diamond families. They spend day after day, month after month, patiently grinding until the perfect diamond reveals itself. It's not just, oh, let's bang them out. Certainly not on big, important diamonds. The risk is being wrong. Never push. Because you might not get what you need. आए थे और वो तो उस इसका तो यहाँ पे कोई नहीं था उसने बहुत ही मगर इस्तेमाल करके वो बहुत ही बड़ा आदमी बनने की कोशिश की बहुत ज़्यादा हीरा बनाने लगे फिर थोड़ा कागे बढ़े थोड़ा कागे बढ़े वो इस वक्त अभी सेट है हेलो जो मैं मेरे को भी राजू भाई जैसा सेट बनना है I didn't know that I was going to be a diamond. My guru said that I was going to be a diamond. I didn't know that I was going to be a diamond. When my guru was going to be a diamond, I didn't know that I was going to be a diamond. I didn't know that I was going to be a diamond. I didn't know that I was going to be a diamond. I didn't know that I was going to be a diamond. for buying rough diamonds for his family's factories in India. Arjav came here and he will do business here like how I did 25 years ago. From childhood he has, uh, he has heard business. It is in his blood. We are very confident that he will take us to the next uh, era. We pass on our business to the next generation. The heart of the diamond world in Antwerp is located in just two city blocks. Every day, 
Tens of millions of dollars go in and out of these two streets. They are among the most secured real estate in the world. It was the Jews who first brought diamonds to Antwerp when they fled here to escape persecution. But in the last 30 years, the Indian diamond families have been replacing them. In the ceaseless movement along the diamond road, one wave of immigrants is absorbing another. 95 or 98 percent of the business was first controlled by the Jewish people. Yeah. They, 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 they started the business in Amsterdam before, before 100 years. Yeah. After the Second World War, they shifted to Antwerp. In the early 70s, Indians came into picture and they started taking more participation in the diamond business here. Now, at the present moment, it is about 60% of the diamond trade is handled by Indians here. Once we are in these two streets, huh, it is we consider ourselves as diamond people, nothing else. The only reference point is diamonds. We talk diamonds, we breathe diamonds, that is all. Indians has the capacity also to integrate very easy in a place where they come, wherever they come. If it is here, they integrate it very nicely. I felt always that they will grow and uh, there is, uh, if you can't beat them, you join them. Arjav lives in the house that Diamonds built secure in the certainty of his family's destiny. Okay, we moved um, to this house about five years ago. My uncle and aunt are very fond of uh, plants and gardening and greenery. Uh, my uncle and aunt have seen to it that uh, the whole place is there for the whole family. I stay here now, so, uh, with my wife, Ashna. Basically, you're living in just like in a forest, if you see. It's also the efforts of uh, all the hard work, all the three brothers' hard work, and my grandfather's hard work is seen in, in this. And I mean, this was their dream to make such a house. Already. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Martin has called a community meeting. He wants to hear from Mohammed and his fellow diggers. Do people understand me? People understand me? They're suspicious. Okay. They've seen too translate? many white men in white jeeps okay. with good intentions come and go. And nothing has changed. First of all, if the digger is getting screwed, let them say the digger is getting screwed. So all which in the apple really now for let them can't see the yeah. If the diggers are not they get better, then go ahead and go talk up. That's why. Finally, the dam or who or the digger say not benefit no the for winner yeah. But sometimes I find that when you don't see say fine. Sometimes I see they go up say not fine. They go put an other dilemma hand. Dilemma they go tell you say say this not double decker. This is crack. This is black. Let me ask you this: People in America say that it's bad in Sierra Leone. Should people in America stop buying diamonds from Sierra Leone? We want them to come and buy our diamonds with, with good prices. We are looking for, if they buy our diamonds with good prices, we can able to help ourselves. If we create a market in Kano every Thursday, and uh, there was an auction, how much you pay, how much you pay, how much you pay, high price taken. Yes. Would that be good? I like the idea. Would people like that idea? Yes, I like that idea. You guys like that idea? Yeah. We all enter inside for let we go, let it rise up, for let we free from this slavery. Say no, man. You need competition. Yes. Fair trade. Fair trade. For the last 40 years, Kasim Basma has sat in his unassuming office buying and selling diamonds. There are just a handful of other licensed exporters in Sierra Leone. 
they have a monopoly on the $125 million a year diamond export trade. How much? Three million years. One million. Four hundred thousand years. With little competition, the exporters set the price. Profits are high. Okay, I'll make a one million five hundred thousand. Okay, I'll make a two million dollars. Get sport then. Yeah, I decide. Sport, I decide. Not at the center, I decide. Yeah. It's not only a matter of talking price. You tell him, this is the fault of the diamond. You convince the seller that this diamond is yellow. He wants to convince you that it is white. Who is the stronger? He will be the winner. And most of the time, with my business, I am the winner. Just for you, 1.6 an ocean. OK? Sir. All right. Thank you very much. Martin has come to meet with Kasim. He knows that without Kasim on side, his plan for better wages for the diggers will not work. I can't cut out any stakeholders. I'm, I'm trying to build a house of very, very difficult people. Hi, Martin. He's here. Again. How are you? Martin. Great Welcome. to see you. Great Welcome. to see you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Well, All right, thank Martin God. Martin wants to propose fine. a public auction system to Cassim for Sierra Leone's diamonds. Excellent. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, it's great to see you. It really is. He needs and to I convince him that a fair right? and open way, market nice will benefit it. everyone in the long this run. Whole? Now, if you structure the deal so the benefit of the higher price isn't just kept by one guy, the supporter benefits, the landowner benefits, and the digger benefits, if they all benefit, they can make more money. But I need your help. I need your help to help explain this to the ministers that it's not a threat to them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the first thing they're concerned about, it's going to be no good, it's going to make me a problem, da, 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 you know? It's a different way of thinking. Yeah. You see, the idea, let's go right to the point. Yeah. Uh, I don't think people will accept it. Because the supporter always looking for a more margin of profits. Right. But if it does work, people will say, aha, I can make more money. That's all I'm about. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah. If you can make more money, do it. If you can't make more money, don't do it. Okay. Business, not humanitarianism. It's, it's where humanitarianism meets business. Actually, I know, I know a lot of uh, diggers. They don't think about the future. They yeah. think only for today, not yeah. for tomorrow. Yeah. That's this the is problem. the problem. So you cannot stress in this issue. Okay. You, you know something? All we have to do is try. And also, if you think it's not good, you need to tell me. I'll change it. We have to make the suit so it fits everybody. The meeting with Kasim has not gone well. Martin now knows that Kasim's profits are high because they have to be. There's only seven exporters. Why does the Syrian government allow those exporters to control the price in Sierra Leone? Could it be because it allows them to make excess profits and those excess profits support the political campaigns of the people running for office in Sierra Leone? Could that be the reason? Very possible, yes. A better deal for the diggers will only happen if the government wants it to happen. Martin asks for a meeting with the country's vice president. The makeover on Andy's diamond is finished. It's taken three months. The stone is beautiful. And I wish I would have an extra half a million dollars 
and I might even buy a store like this one. But you know what? If I make a few dollars and I'll sell it, I'll be even happier. So, Andy, it's a gorgeous store, don't get me wrong. You want to give me half a million dollars, that would be standing up, and that's about it. And I was going back and forth, I told him it wouldn't even break the ice. It's a lot of money, 500 is a lot of money, but please tell your guy, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sell it for that. Sometimes the first offer is the, the best, best offer. offer. It's true, you paid a lot of money for it, I'm not there. I'm, I'm, you I, your guy I, up a little bit? I'll come down a little bit. I'll come. I'll tell you. I'll come down right now. I'll come down to twenty-five. Everybody's asking thirty-five, forty for these stones. Not on apps, you know, Andy. Let's put it that way. It's a special stone, Jacob. You're right, but it's a, a, a half a million dollars for an F flawless. I mean, so get him up a little bit. You know what? Let me see. Do me favor. Do you thinking? I am not. I'll do, you, I'll do my thinking. You do your thinking. Exactly. Yeah, hi, Jacob. Hi, Danny. Listen. Simple. I got him down to 25 for him. You have to try to talk to your customer and tell him that a stone like this is a beauty, and it which is the truth. And you have you have seen quite a lot of animal cuts. So do what you're supposed to do. All right? I, I will do it on my end what I have Praise to do. Praise the Lord. I, I, I will make it happen. All right. Be right. Bye bye. So he's going to go back to his customer. He's going to try to convince his customer to buy it. Now I hope that he's gonna convince him. And if he doesn't convince him, I'm out of it. And I work the day for nothing, and no commission. Hopefully it's gonna happen. So I just leave it up to God's hands. You know, people on the street think, you're a diamond dealer. Gee, he owns everything. He must be a multimillionaire and a billionaire, believe me. I struggle and I work very hard. I take losses. Legs are from boss, all right? At the end of the day, if you make a comfortable living, I'm happy. Yeah, it's yes, going to be very right. exciting. Exactly. It's going to be very exciting. Martin finally gets a meeting with the country's vice Sorry, president. Sir, hi, how are you? Hello, Thank you. Sir Adelbert, nice you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate that very much. At the last minute, he decides that this meeting is best held in private. Turn the camera off. Go. Just move. Now, I'm telling you that I am uncovering a sea of bullshit right here, okay? And the bullshit goes right to the president's house. It doesn't go anywhere else. And, that, and I just want an answer, and I want to know how to deal with it. Even the irrepressible Martin Rappaport can't change years of history in one meeting. The pyramid of 150,000 diggers at the bottom and a few exporters and government ministers at the top won't collapse in a week. Now we have a problem. I mean, I'm talking to the vice president, I'm talking to the minister, I'm trying to convince them this is a good idea. I'm using every bit of energy I have to talk to them and to get them to understand that this is really good for their people. And not only is it good for their people, you know, it won't affect their bribery level, but I gotta say that in a way that doesn't threaten them or make me appear to be not using my interpersonal skills enough. But the bottom line is, are government officials receiving monetary benefit due to the fact that diggers are being exploited? Is the government exploiting the diggers? That's the question. And if this is true, and the reason for the exploitation is because the profit, the money that would go to diggers is going to government officials in the form of bribes, then should we be allowing people to buy Sierra Leone diamonds? Because I will not allow Rappaport to be a fig leaf to cover up government corruption that hurts diggers. Some NGOs are taking a position that the exploitative conditions are so strong, are so horrifying, that people around the world should simply stop buying Sierra Leone diamonds. This would then force a crisis in which perhaps the government would fall. If the government fell, it's possible that you would have a power vacuum 
and Sierra Leone would return into revolution. It's a serious problem. And I think people need to realize the war is over, but the fundamental underlying conditions that caused the war are not over. Listen to me, Andy, let's wrap it up because the price I gave you is a good price. We discussed that. You can have the money before 35 days. You have to understand I'm trying to push the guy as much as I can, but this is a fine. Are you making? He's going to give me a commission. Are you happy with the commission? I'm never happy. I'm always happy, never happy. Do I know what? No, you're always happy. You know what, Jacob? <laughs> My grandfather always told me, you never go broke taking a profit. I'm a fair prop, and I'm a big one, I'm a small one. Um, I'm going to say, Mazal, and I'm the next deal. Mazal, be well, bye-bye. Yeah, he's happy. He's not making much because I know exactly what he paid for it, but he's happy. He turned it over next. They go on to the next deal. Hey, Josh, be in my office in about 10 minutes and come pick up the stone, all right? Hi! Mazal. If I say, okay, I will use the word mazal, it's finished, it's done. Switch it from hand to hand. You love it? Love it. All yours. It's like cash in my bank, because this guy is going to stand by what he says. It's verbal. I love it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous make. And I'm a sucker for big corners, so. <laughs> mazal. Beautiful. Lot 334 will soon be in the hands of its next owner. Another story will be added to its long history. It's not sad. You pretend the face you make sad. No, it's not. You don't fall in love with diamonds. My sister. Let's say this what I am. You have to say that she's going 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 to say किस्मत हम हम पर जा रखी है वो क्या कर रहे हैं क्या चाहता है कुछ नहीं किस्मत तो अब तक तो My father was a graduate of Auschwitz, so was my mother. And in their world, anything was possible. If you could survive Auschwitz, you could do anything. You know, people look at your fair trade diamonds and they're like, you're crazy, you can't do that. About... Nothing is impossible if I really want to do it. Where are the rest of the kids? Are we out of here? Let's get a guy. Bill Hockey, Bill or something. As he leaves Sierra Leone, Martin is already planning his next trip to the country. Everything is still possible. Look, we're dealing with very tough stuff. That's the bottom line. It's going to take a bit of time, but the country is going to move forward. It's a slow process. This is going to happen. We're going to do it. I don't care so much what other people think. And I'm not looking for recognition and ego trips. I want to remember myself for the good things that I've done. You know, like God will know that I did it. And that's enough. Sit 
Mohammed perseveres in the hope that one day he will find that diamond which will set his family free. I do find a pin me foundation. Where give me big one myself, I don't get. Finally, see, because now then they make I, I be somebody back. Because once a life day, any chance came available for me. Now this world. I defend her. 